Okay, Job's continuing, Job 27. And he's attacking Bildad. Moreover, Job continued his parable. I love how God works in our family. We just read a whole bunch of parables. A parable is a fable or allegory, relation or representation of something real in life or nature. So, Job being the earliest book in the Bible, here's your first parable. And this whole thing, according to the, to the Holy Spirit, what we're going to read now, and what we read in 26, is a parable. And the representation are these men that don't know how to answer and how to help him. As God liveth, God always liveth. Who has taken away my judgment? And the Almighty, that's God who has vexed my soul. All right, God's done it, Job's saying. Everything comes, it's a judgment. All the while my breath is in me. <laughs> that's kind of interesting to read. That's what we just went through as a family. And the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit of God is in my nostrils. So what did Job say? Job says, I am a product of a creator, not evolution. It is God that breathes in my nostrils. I have life from God. And he's been complaining all along that he wants death, but he's acknowledging God as his life. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. God forbid that I should justify you, Bildad. Till I die, I will not remove my integrity. That's what God told the devil. That man re retained his integrity. His wife shows up and says, Will you just get rid of that integrity and curse God? That's one thing Job's holding still and holding fast to, his integrity. Now verse 6 is the trouble. Here is Job's sin. My righteousness, self-righteous, I hold fast. I will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Not until God deals with you. And that's Job's sin right there. 27 chapters later, it takes Job to... All right... I, now, I don't know if he's confessing as he's saying, just listen, my righteousness, I'm going to hold fast, I'm staying in it. And that's the whole problem of Job. And we'll get more and more on that. Lord willing, let my enemy be as the wicked. I don't know who he's calling his enemy here, unless it's those men. And he that rises up against me as the unrighteous. And the only ones right now in the Job's life to come against him, enemy could be those that stole his, his animals, or these three men who've been blasting him. For what is the hope of a hypocrite? None. Though he hath gained which God has taken away his soul. Alright, the hypocrite, he. And there's a story of a parable Jesus tells about this rich man. Man, he's going to build all these uh, self-contained storage centers. He's going to build all these places. He's going to have all this lot. He's got to build bigger barns. And he's got, I mean, he's just got it. He's got the wealth and he's got the property. And he's going to build. And God says, thou fool tonight, your soul. So this is... A story that we relate in Jesus. Now listen, when Jesus spoke about those things, and if they were smart and wise of the scriptures, this would have brought, because they would have had Job in the scriptures. They, you know, I think we heard that somewhere. So a hypocrite will lose his soul. Though he's gained everything. And let me tell you what the modern thing is today, the bumper sticker, he with the most toys in the end wins. No, he don't. Those who get the will, those who the state says will get until they die. 
God taking away his soul. It doesn't say God took his soul. It says he taking it away. He got rid of his soul. Will God hear his cry when trouble comes upon him? The general answer is no. Maybe God's mercy, but generally no. People want God will answer the prayers of everybody. Really? You mean all the people in India who are sacrificing to gods and goddesses? And they cry out for food and God says, there goes your food right there. Your grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle is called a cow. Why should I answer you? Get rid of your gods and feast. Have a barbecue. I'll tell you who God listens to. He listens to his priests. He said, are there priests in the church age? Yeah, us. Those that are saved that offer up the prayers for the lost people. That's what God hears. Will he delight himself in the Almighty, the hypocrite? No. Will he always call on God? No. He'll call on anybody but God. And if he does call upon God, he doesn't mean it. It's a foxhole religion. I, Job, will teach you, Bildad, you by the hand of God. You're trying to tell me, but let me teach you. That which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. Job speaking. I'm going to tell you what God has to say. Behold, all ye, the three men, you has been Bildad, ye are all the three men. All ye selves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? What's been the whole topic of these three men? Vanity. You don't know what you're saying. You're quacks. Shut up. Your decisions of no value. You're not helping me. Vain means empty. Empty. This is the portion of a wicked man with God. Man, we, they've been saying, Job, you're wicked. Job, you're vile. Job, you're going to hell. Job, everything's happened because you're wicked. And Job has turned. He said, listen, this is what the wicked man, this is the ways of the wicked man. And now he's turned and said, you're the wicked man. And later on, God's going to agree with him. And Job is also wicked because he's a sinner. This is the portion of wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors which they shall receive of the Almighty. They don't get blessings. If his children, the wicked man, be multiplied, and they do, it is for the sword, death, war, capital punishment. His offspring shall not be satisfied with bread, famine, lack of food. Those that remain of him, the wicked man, shall be buried in death. Death will have all have sinned, wages of sin is death, and his widows shall not weep. Now the only way, only two ways I can see that a widow would not weep is she had no idea that he's the, her husband's dead. He's ran off, he's taken care, whatever it is, in wartime, whatever it is. Or the widow doesn't care about the person, it's the husband. He's dead, oh well. I'm glad for it. So there are two possible ways I would see that there'll be no weeping. Though he heap up silver as the dust. That's Solomon. Now Solomon was wicked. He had all the silver and all the gold, as plenty as rocks, and he fell for all these women and got into all the gods. And yet the sure mercies of David and upon Solomon, Solomon was still saved. But there's the prophecy if you want to see one of Solomon right there. And prepared raiment, raiment as the clay. And that's a complete story. You know, clothes must not have been really... A thing back in the Old Testament, it they must not have last because when Samson says, Listen, I got this riddle, what is the payment? Ten garments. Uh garments seem to me they, they don't last as long as they do today, and you're in a desert climate. So 
And it's an interesting study. And then another thing is, too, if you sin, you get angry. You're always ripping your garments. You know, they sat down at us and they tore open their garment. That doesn't keep your garments too well. And then Jesus said, if you sew it back up, you make the rent even worse. I always thought that with Solomon. Here's this, this great thing. I can get this great thing if I tell this real. I want changes of garments. So, a little interesting study there. He may prepare it, that's the wicked man, but the just shall put it on. Whoa. That wicked man is going to do what all he can do. But there are people who are living right and doing right who are living off the expenses of that rich man. There are people today, they're making a living off a tyrant, off a person who owns a business and he's wicked and he's vile and is still getting a paycheck. And that paycheck that they get I'm going to say few, they'll write a check to the Lord, to their church and, and missionaries. That that wicked wild man had no I had no meaning of giving money to the church or missionaries, but the person that, you know, the, the, the person that's just and righteous, Lord, I'm going to give to you. And that came from the wicked man. And that wicked man does not get any credit. Yeah. Now, let's think like this, a husband and wife. My wife and I were saved. We love the Lord. and I'd write a check or I'd do something for the Lord. Though she can't be part of it, the Lord has part in her. All right? Here's a man. He gives his paycheck. He, and he probably underpays the guy, too, if, you, if you're in America today. He swindles him. There are people today who are getting their last checks, and they're not even good. They're bouncing. Oh, God, I don't believe in you. God, you can take... And they throw everything at God. God's like, yeah, that guy, when you just gave that guy there that you hate for doing a good job, he's a Christian, and he's faithful, and you hate him, he gave me some of your money. Thank you. You know someone else in the Bible that was just? Lot. He was, he was in a wicked and vain society, and yet the Bible said he was just. And I, the way he acted when those when those men came in, the angels, I would think he gave God something. I don't know how, I don't know, we not told the story, but he may, the wicked may prove, but the just shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the silver. Sometimes rich people, they die, you know, they're so haunty, they don't make wills because I'm going to live forever. I'm going to be the big kingpin. Well, however, he, the wicked, builds the house as a moth. As a moth? <laughs> is that really a good comparison? Even Jesus says the guy that, you know, does not do my work. He built the house upon the earth and when the storm... I mean, the guy built a house, okay? And just the storm's battering. Here's a guy who builds his house like a moth. You mean if I swat that moth and kill him, and then within time he's going to be, you know, decayed? I mean, that's going down to the lumber shop. Hi, I'm going to build a house. Sure, well, what do you want? Two by fours? And No, no, I want moth. You need to go to the pet store. As a booth that the keeper makes it. And booth is nothing. And the only other place booth shows up is in Jonah 4 5. That's the first time booth shows up. I don't really do that anymore because it's messing up my Bible. But fairs have booths. And they pack them up and they take them down. They're, they're made to be portable, temporary. That guy may have a mansion on, on this earth. Let's say he's got a mansion. Rich, got a mansion. That mansion, according to Mother Earth and the Bible, and all, is going to burn up. You know what the mansion I'm going to get? It's going to last for all ever. And some people try to weaken it, call it a shack, call it a room and all that. No, God said, I'm, I'm building you a mansion. That guy's mansion, don't envy it because it's going to burn up. It's like a temporary little boo. He'll be gone. Bye-bye. The rich man shall lie down. We all lie down. But he shall not be gathered. The rich man that died when Jesus taught, they, they buried him and he woke up in hell. It says, as far as Lazarus, the just man. Now, I don't know. If this, I don't know if this is for the Christian, but 
The Christian says, the absent from the body and present with the Lord. For Lazarus, the angels came down and said, come on, Lazarus. Got a little ride. I'll be gathered when I die, gathered to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. If a lost man dies, throw him in hell. Won't hear his prayers. God, look at all the money. I no, he ain't got no money. I'm all dressed up and you ain't got no clothes to go anywhere. He shall not be gathered. He opens his eyes. And he is not. Now let's go to Luke 16, 23 real quick. Because that's important. This is, this is the first book in the Bible written. And look at how Jesus and Job knows more than the Jehovah Witnesses. I didn't say that. In Luke 16, 23, you can't teach a Jehovah Witness this. This is Jesus. We read what Job said. When he opens his eyes, he's nothing. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Now, Job didn't know that. And seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. You know, Job and Jesus say one thing. A, rich, a man in hell opens his eyes. And as far as Job, Jesus says they're in torment. Job said, I opened my eyes in hell, and I ain't nothing. I may have been the greatest Christian Republican. I may have been the greatest Christian Democrat. In hell, I am nothing. I may have been the big owner of big corporation. In hell, I am nothing. I don't even have a name in hell. Terror, take hold on him as waters. Think of that rich man in hell. He says, I'm tormented, tormentings, and torments. And according to Job, he's in terror. There's no terror that a Hollywood could make of Halloween movie than the most terrifying thing is to realize you're in hell, you ain't never coming out, and you ain't gonna never get released. There's terrors and terrors and terrors and terrors as torments and torments and torments. And it never ends as you're nothing. A tempest stealeth him away in the night. A tempest stole Job's children. East wind. East wind in the Bible is never good. East wind is that, I guess it's that storm that it doesn't bring any good. Trouble. Carried him away. And he departed. And as a storm hurled him out of his place. All right, let's run back to the parable of Jesus. He said, this man builds his house. He built it in the earth and he does not do the word of God. And the storms came and great is the destruction. Because he would not adhere to the word. Job has said, I have seen the word of God more than my necessary food and drink. For God shall cast, him, cast upon him. And not spare. There's no sparing. There's no mercy. There's no grace in hell. He would feign. The only place that shows up is Luke 15, 16. That's the parable of the particle son. Oh, the feign of the, the eat. Of the husk of the pig. He would feign flee out of his hand. Men shall clap their hands at him. And that's not, yay! Only America gets it wrong. When you clap your hands in the Bible, that's, hey, you're a loser. Ha, 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 ha. Loser. Glad it happened to you. You know, if you do the biblical way, you know, in your church, you clap your hands because it's good. The biblical is, it's not good at all. We're going to live by the Bible. Yay, it was good. Not according to the Bible. And shall hiss him out of his place. The wicked does not have any standing. 